Hello. Can you see me? Okay. It's all... Okay. Elida, I am sorry. I was thinking, Lori said we had one this afternoon, and so I just totally got involved <laughs> in something else. I, I understand how that happens. <laughs> oh, uh, you're so patient. Holy crap. No, I. I no, I do understand. It's it's we just get involved, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the day is here and the time. Okay, and then I was looking for because I did um what five I think of my hourly um, schedule. Okay, awesome. Yeah, no, I really like that process. It was it, it was going really smooth, and I was just I don't have them with me. They must they must be in my other book. Can but, you, you want to go find them? No, I think they're at home. Oh shoot! Okay. Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, no, they, it was really well. I'm do, just you, going, do you remember the? Can you tell me a little bit about the process or how you did it? Yeah, so um, I actually drew, so I took pictures of my cards and then my other art book, I took those pictures and I actually physically drew them out. So I have them laid out in one format and then I just grabbed, um, grabbed one sheet and just went through each of the seven steps with um, the intent and the words and the values that I had written down. So yeah, no, it was really good. It made me think, but then it just got easier and easier as as I went through that process. Okay. That, yeah, much, yeah. It, it was just really, really smooth after the first two. Um, yeah, I thought it was really good. So and I got as far as design specs. So I have two more left. Okay. So what, like, that's, that's awesome. Um, so the, what about the, like, were you choosing different combo types at each of the seven steps kind of thing? Or, or did you just choose things you wanted to do, or how, how are you? How are you? How are you doing that? Yeah, I just chose um, things that I thought that process would look like. I never thought, and that's a really good concept. So I of doing like a one-on-one -on -one and a group and and that. I never that. I can't say that was specifically in my head when I was doing it. I was just going through the process. I think in my mind, I was doing it at, as a group. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I don't, that wasn't what I was um, implying there. Okay. Um, because each, each one of those parts or steps is either going to be an individual or a group as a whole. Right. And then once you go inside the step, now you're breaking down into the seven steps and then each one of those can be a conversation type. Did you do that or were you breaking down by this is just what I see happening kind of thing? More, this is just what I see happening. Okay, because then you can kind of reverse engineer and look at, you know, this is what I see happening and then you can uh, assign a, a conversation type to each one of those. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. So you've got your larger framework, which is the five spaces. Right. Then you've got the next larger framework, which is your main convo spell. And then you're breaking it down into the seven step process. And each and then you're looking at, okay, this is this is the flow of what I want to have happen. And then you look at each one of those can have a conversation type like the start could be the welcoming. Um, you know, the next thing we could break like do you remember any of your any of the the processes um well i could 
probably. I just wanted to bring that because you're get you're getting very you did five of them so that's that's awesome yeah it's your and, and how did it feel in terms of sort of like designing the curriculum like how did it feel in terms of like really putting down on paper what you wanted to see happen kind of thing Re really good yes um so now it's to break that down even further so i think the first say for example welcoming um i had like say an introduction but that introduction is what um the purpose or the result you know we hope to achieve at the end of this whole process and then um the, a little bit more deep um, into the introduction was say myself and then going through the participants for an introduction and then um, what they would hope to achieve in this process. So almost setting their intention of going through the process. Awesome. But we were, I was probably right there at the crescendo because that, right, I want that as the top thing. And then um, the ease out would be, you know, this is what the the month will look like or the weeks coming up will look like. And um, the very last one, what is the very last one? Maybe a little homework or getting them ready for the yeah, next thing? Like that, yeah. Yeah, so no, I really liked it. Um, and the visioning was really good to help me, you know, go through that. Um, yeah, it was just a, a really nice, nice process. Have you ever, have you ever sort of so meticulously designed, you know, an hour or a, a course like that? No, no, that's not my, um, my thing. Right. So, yeah, no. Um, so how did it? How did it kind of feel or like how, how was it? I, I mean, I keep asking you, but I, I guess it's uh, I just want to congratulate you. You know, that's that's a, that's yeah. a, a massive thing, you know, to do that. Yeah. And to also, I think you're, you're starting probably to see that, you know, you can design anything. You can you can really you can really get down to the minutia of what you want to have happen in the ideal. And then you as a facilitator, then you have to go through the process of taking people through it, which is. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah. now I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this because um, it came up with Lori a bit, but you know, because you and Lori are very different people. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and in terms of partnerships, you know, different people play different roles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it seems to me that you like being the background role and you like, you know, being the organizer who's sort of behind the scenes and not yeah. necessarily in the front kind of. And <clears throat> I didn't want to impose upon you let's say for your ideal job kind of like either the idea of you having to facilitate masterminds or you, you having to do anything right i mean i i don't want that to yeah. be, i i sort of want to present possibilities and opportunities mm -hmm. and hopefully from there you're deciding which you like and which you don't right right and, and so yeah. the the idea is this framework can be custom designed so I'm giving you the framework and sort of pushing and pulling you a little bit to kind of see where you are and where you're not. But I just want to sort of honor your own sort of like natural disposition and what you want. So I know sometimes I can be sort of forward with what I'm putting forward. And I don't, you know, I, I just want to get some feedback around that, around this whole process we're doing and how you, where you're at. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, no, really good. And I don't feel that you're pushing, like I see everything we're doing as an experience and a learning tool for me to further understand and use it in what we do, whether, you know, myself or help other people through the process. Yeah, no, I don't feel any, any pressure saying this is, you know, like that at all. Okay. So, it's all good. And I totally understand that um, 
that it's my choice on, you know, if I want to go out there and be front speaker or whatever, but, um, and or not, but I don't like that word, but we're okay, we yeah. using that word, but with and, and right. And I like the idea that I get that little bit of push, okay. right? Because that push is what helps people grow. Okay. So, all good. Okay, just just okay. just checking because I because I under you know for me from my end it's it's and I think this is which you will have to see when you're doing it with people right it's it's like you have to sort of match or attempt to match the capacity of the person in the moment with whatever's the next step kind of thing mm -hmm. and be very uh, aware of the impact and ask for the feedback and constantly kind of be checking to see. You know, is this work is a lot of times, you know, I, I know in myself in my past when, when I'm more unconscious or more un, unaware and I'm trying to bring something forward with somebody, but I'm not registering them well. Okay. And, you know, in, in any type of sort of abstract uh, learning, you know, there's always the next step, the next stage kind of thing that you're you're pulling them towards. Oh, very nice. Very nice. And. You, you know, I think as a teacher or a facilitator, it's very important to gauge where the person is at in their process because you, you, they may be having shadow work or they may be having other things coming up. The blocks come up like you have path and block. Right. So you're sort of gauging in the moment, you know, are they open? Or are they closed? Because a lot of time, you know, we've got all these defense mechanisms. We've got all our ways of hiding the truth of how we really feel. Right. And I think you and I and, you know, we built up a trust and a safety factor where, you know, we have that full trust zone yeah, we're good. where, you know, but but I think it's when you're doing this with people that it's it's just very important to sort of constantly check in because you never know, kind of, no matter how well you think, you know, the person, you never know where they could be right at a precipice or they're really because this is a transformative process and no matter what you know, our blocks are going to come up. And that's when, you know, you might want to go into a healing convo or you might want to go into some sort of clearing, depending, right? Mm -hmm. On where that, that's, yeah, that's a really good point. Just to always be aware of like, yeah, so many, so many signs, right? And checking in, yeah, good point. I read, um, uh, like, I read this one book about coaching and he was talking exactly about what you had said um all like almost but it is about um not one person doing all the talking but questioning and getting feedback and you know always say you know how are you what point are you at right now what's on your mind you know yeah just question constantly so. and again sort of like the um you know I, I think these are big steps right and 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 the person may not know it's a big step and and then mm -hmm. you know you, you're <clears throat> as a coach sometimes it's uh you're sort of moving about a lot in terms of trying to to sort of in the moment register impact and register need and those are both sort of choice lenses, right? So, you, you know, the, the idea of you're sort of, I don't know if you, and it seems almost like sort of so simple. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, I mean, if you look at, have you had any training in nonviolent communication? No. So <laughs> essentially it's a healing conversation with the value of compassion, with the choice lens of need. I mean, that, it's, that's a real simplification, but if, if the thing about what the inflow does is it, it sort of, it, it categorizes or it gives a very specific configuration, right? And so if you ever get like nonviolent communication could be like one of the most transformative communication uh, technologies, I think that has come out, you know, in the last 20, 30 years. And when I, when I dived in or, you know, tried to understand it, that uh, all of a sudden I saw that I saw it. Wow. It's, it's, you know, you're in a healing convo. You're doesn't matter what the person's coming at you with. You're just focused with compassion on their needs. 
right? It's, 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 a, it's you know, okay. it's, it's the basis yeah. of the formulation of the spell. And so like, you know, hopefully what I'm trying to do with you is to give you the, the basic sort of fundamentals of a sort of like a new thinking system. And so when you have that value conversation type and lens, you're creating this mechanism in your mind that becomes like slots, right? Where you can change the value, you can change a convo type and you can change, you know, the, the focus point. And so this is a, you know, very, very, very kind of like simple in some, like it, it, it is complex, but it's like trying to simplify it into this sort of three parts. And if you see it like nonviolent communication is like this incredible, huge, massive sort of gift to humanity but if you look at it, it's just, okay, it's a healing convo focused on need, bringing in compassion. And so if you switch like the convo to investigation and you switch the uh, value to accuracy and you switch the, the choice lens to, okay. uh, let's say breakthrough, right? Like you're doing at the table where you're training yourself to kind of see in that way, all of a sudden you're, you're okay. You know, you're, you're bringing them in like the lenses on a, on the uh, on the the eye doctor right and you're kind of like oh chick 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 and i think it's 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 like a, a new type of mechanism for our minds to to, to oh, work yeah. that way yeah. so i could you give me some feedback on on how that's been happening for you or what what occurs well i haven't got that far yet you know literally when you're talking i i haven't got that far in even in my thinking except for say like you know when we're here or things like that so i haven't um made a point or carried that knowledge with me outside of these four walls okay Do which is well, it's, it's, it's again, like these are new sort of mental skills, right? It's, it's, uh, and, and I think as we get older <laughs> and, and the pathways are more kind of formed, it's, it's, I think it's a lot harder for adult learners to learn this stuff probably than, than kids or uh, teenagers, right? That it, hopefully at some point they get these tools at a younger age and then it just right. becomes normal, right? To, to kind of know what combo type we're in and, you know, what lens you're using kind of thing and what's your intention here. Um, do you have the cards in front of you? Do you have the cards? Oh, but I can grab them real quick. Yeah, why don't you grab them? I would love to get a set of cards. So yes. I'm first on your list. Yes. Okay. <laughs> unless, unless I can find my daughter's cards, but I have no idea where those are. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, so I just thought that um, let's play a little bit of a game here. And uh, why don't you pull out, have, have the value cards, the convo types, and the uh, choice lenses. Okay. <laughs> and I think <laughs> this is our last session, right, of module four? I have to go back on my and check, but it could be. <clears throat> I think so. Um, One, two, three. Yeah. Okay, and before, why do we have a, a quick review? And if you get a blank piece of paper. Like, do I need, like, just in my book, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah your book is fine. And why don't you uh, draw out the flow wheel? with your values okay. without, without looking at anything of course <laughs> How, do you find that since we've been doing the the, the deeper layers on it that you're it's it's, I, it's you right now yeah i like the layers really really good um i just i want to just go grab a pencil okay okay just bear with me So write all the write as much as you can without 
without think you know uh, without going to anything else and just okay I think I'm thinking more of the synergy than I than I am this one. Pause. Well, and maybe you know that one well, and then you can go down to the flow, you know, because the mind works through association, right? So you have to have a sort of center point of what you remember. Do you find your thinking in systems a little bit better? A little bit better. Um, it's it, it's it's me try, needing to commit and be aware of putting these tools in in place on a regular basis. That that's that's what it's going to take. Yeah, you need your own set of cards. I mean, that's the big piece is the cards. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay, you know, I'm going to be better off. I'm not liking this. I just, I want to look. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I need to look. How are you, how are you, how are you in general with memorizing things? It needs constant repeating. Yeah. Oh, I got one right. Because I think you'll find that like once they're memorized, the more maps you memorize, the, the easier it gets kind of thing, because then it starts to build upon itself. But I, I, you know, the mind is a very, you know, unknown territory in many ways, right? And, and in the medieval days, they used to have very strong memory enhancing techniques. Right. And I don't think, at least in school, I didn't get taught memory techniques that well, you know, like that, that would have been a very good, a good thing to learn. And then what happens, the mind gets into patterns and habits and operates on itself. Right. How have you found your communication in, you know, in the last couple of months? Um, better, but I think it's more of releasing any control that I may have wanted or needed and just letting the universe and things happen and checking in on what do I need to learn from this experience because you know it disrupts me or it does whatever it does to me um conversation has been more aware and in the process of be more clearer in my, I guess, my words or what I'm trying to get across. So, so that's a big, that's a big philosophical shift. <laughs> shift. <laughs> um, so it's it's a work in progress. How about that? <laughs> yes. Okay, multi path relationship path and I 
because there, there's such a you know there's such a difference between designing tools using tools and teaching tools and to design tools that help people to learn you know as as visual kinesthetic the cards become visual kinesthetic things and i think i think cards are very underestimated in terms of you know their use in in all of our educational systems right like i like cards are kind of like either tarot decks or they're playing cards but there's there's not a lot of card i mean there are obviously educational um tools out there for esl and different things but um I'm just just surprised, right? That there there's nothing like this, right? No, there isn't anything. But um, it really, like, by having these cards on, like, in hand, it really fits in with a lot of other um, modalities, you know. Because okay, well, you've got cards. We have cards. We have cards, right? I mean, yeah. I, I really, yeah, I, I like the, the idea of having lenses or cards. Really good. Okay, so let's see if I have this right, even by copying. Um, so do we number it? Or I have agreements, feel, resources, jobs, activities, products, relationships, paths, and strategies? Yep. Okay. Okay. And you have your values at each one? I sure do. <laughs> okay. Um, so agreements was understanding. Fields was goodness. Resources was life. Jobs was balance, activities was generosity, products was consistency, relationships was happiness, path was passion, and strategies was um, honor. Was what honor? Honor. And the conversations? Um, I don't know. I've got the time on. Let me go back. Oh, I was going to read that. Um, I don't have, oh, conversation, sorry, with happiness and organization. Organization? Yeah, happiness and organization. Oh, I had happiness you have happiness at a relationship, right? Yeah. Yeah, organization. Okay, so... Did we, did we do a at the beginning or when we did that did we do a plus or minus minus 10 or plus 10 in each of those no i don't recall that at all oh no okay so right now um i'm going to ask you a question and you're, you're going to get a number from minus 10 to plus 10 in terms of your value system okay so okay. how much goodness do you have in your field minus 10 to plus 10 Oh, yeah, like plus, plus 10. <laughs> plus 10. But remember now, like if you're looking at 10 is like the highest of your potential that you could have. So let's say you just put two. It may seem low to you, but it gives you a lot of room to go, wow, I can increase that to the 10. Okay. If, but exactly. if you're at seven or eight, you know what I mean, kind of thing? Okay. So how much of your realized potential do you feel that you have in each one of these so okay. from that from that point of view how what's your number of goodness oh it's probably um a five to an eight five to eight okay just give me one number for now okay seven 
So, okay. How much life at resources? Life um, five. How much balance at job? Oh, that's that's an eight. How much generosity at activities? Oh, a lot. We'll say two. I think we need I need more on that. Okay. How much consistency at products? Oh, that's like a minus three. Okay. How much happiness at relationships? Oh, that's like a seven, eight, seven. How much passion at path? Oh, that's like a seven. How much honor at strategies? Honor at strategies. Oh, I, nothing comes to mind on that one. Um, Do zero? Yeah, I, I don't know. Okay. Um, how much understanding at agreements? Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, we'll say five for now. Okay. And how much organization at conversation? Oh, we'll say three. Okay. Okay. So put a date beside those, like on your map. Okay. And um, this is the numbers represent. The numbers represent your sort of your your self assessment of how much you are realizing that value in each field. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a year from now, you can look at it and go, okay, well, you know, I, I feel more balanced, or I, I'm getting more consistent in my products. It's it's a reference point in terms for you. Okay. To realize, you know, how am I progressing? Because each of these values, as you know, has a as a uh, um, as you progress through life, you will realize and understand to greater degrees of depth. You know just what, let's say, balance a job means, or just what happiness at relationship means, or goodness at, at field means. And so, as you sort of like what you're saying to the universe is, th this is. This is what I'm choosing to value within this okay. area of my life, right? So whether through divination or whether through choice, you now have this, it's basically your code of honor. So what, what this is doing it, it is like, and this is when you do it with other people, right? You are giving them a map that becomes the code of honor, which becomes the reference point for them to learn and, and realize these values. And you, you know, just because we made the map, you know, that's, that's one kind of level in terms of awareness and understanding. Um, but then what happens, and I'm sure you, you see this, you go through experiences mm -hmm. and you may go, oh, oh, wow, like I'm not being balanced in my job here, or um, I don't feel very passionate about this, so I, I don't really want to do it kind of thing. And, and so the values are becoming your reference point for your feelings. Oh, I love that, yeah. For assessing, you know, how true to your path are you? Like, like, if, like if you're not, let's say, if you don't feel there's honor in this strategy, you will then get information and data about that, right? Yeah. And, and so when you when you're looking at your own ability to kind of like when you go through these experiences and sometimes it takes a while right it takes a while to sort of process what happened and some of these are negative experiences and some of these are positive experiences or, or, or just let's say experiences in general but what we're looking to do is to fine tune our awareness in regards to how these values are operating in our life and then let's say you're you're looking at the group synergy values and then you, you've got another value system which you're sharing with people mm -hmm. and that group synergy field is very activated in terms of like if you're looking at like your three main ones happiness understanding and balance right where you know what really does that mean like how do those three interact together how do they interact in in your and Lori's interaction and in your communication and, and bringing people on board. And um, so it's, it's, it's like you're setting 
you're setting the tone for the rest of your life with a new methodology to realize values, which, which is, you know, massive in a sense, right? And, and then as you do it for yourself, you're going to take put people through processes, which are, they're going to do it for themselves. Yeah. And then you're hoping, let's say, to teach the, some of them, you may teach them to, to teach others kind of thing, right? But, but I, I think like, I really want to appreciate you for, you know, for going through this process with me because I'm learning how to be a teacher. And I, you know, there's certain things at least that I have been aiming at or I have experienced and, and you know, the inventor of a tool, it's, it's quite different, right? Than someone just getting the tool and using it because I went through all the processes to get to the part of, of doing that. So I, when you just take the tool and then you're being taught it, it's, it's a different kind of experience. Like the inventor has to step back and kind of, you know, well, how does this work? And like, how do you teach it? And, you know, you're not going to learn the same way I learn. And um, anyway, you want to give some feedback or something? Or? Yeah, I like I, I love the idea and the process that you said about like the values are becoming the system to measure your feelings right yeah on where you're at so like rating what we did and then taking that and you know maybe once a month or whatever like I'm seeing, okay, let's just see where, or once a week or whatever, you know, and just seeing where I see myself um, in those, with those values at those um, stages in, in, in the wheel, in the flow wheel. Um, I, I just, yeah, I really, that, that clicked to me right off the bat was the values and how they relate to your feelings and at those at those levels that was really good um and it re and it does like I, I can see that fine-tuning the awareness so becoming more aware of the values that you hold will in turn um create the awareness of what is happening internally and the mindsets and all those things can can shift because of the awareness of having those values. Yeah, no, that that clicked. And the code of honor that was that was really cool, you know, um, because if when we have those values, say in their synergy wheel and we're not holding those values um to heart or we're not holding those values to we're, we're not honoring those values then we need to relook at say what we're doing what we're saying um all of that kind of stuff so i think that that's huge to um i'm thinking we may be need to make a sign or something <laughs> because yeah. also I, I would i would add that at certain points like this is just a start and you may you may at some point go you know what i, I need more uh maybe enthusiasm around my products or maybe i need more you know whatever you're going you want more of right and you, you you look at your value system and you go okay well I'm going to change I'm going to bring in whatever that value is and that that's kind of like a big thing. Okay. Yeah. So, at some point, like I would suggest maybe going a year maybe with one value system and then then maybe changing. But you, you might come to a point going no I I think I really want to bring in commitment. Or I want. To... <laughs> is that Lori? No, it was um, Kaylee. Oh, hi, Kaylee. Hey, Kaylee. hey how, how about that map for the curling? Uh, did you finish that? I'm in finals right now. That's a no, I think she's, she's saying. As soon as I get to 
Friday, then it's on mm, top of my list. So when does it begin? <laughs> when do you want it then? No, I mean it's it's up to your own timing. I just I just had given you that uh, assignment, and I was just sort of wondering where you're at with it. I have an idea. Like I have it done up here, but I just need to put it on paper. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I want Lucas thought with you sometime within that like first week of July or something. What's that? I'll book something with you in like the first week of July. Okay. I just So we're a little over time, but we started late, and I, I think I is Lori coming on after, or is that? Um, you know, I don't know if she will. She has the conference that she was a part of. Oh, right, she, right, 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 right. And so she said something about this afternoon. Yeah, we have a we have a, a team call at two. At two two BC time, which is three our time, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, that's perfect. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, do you have any homework besides finishing those seven steps? Well, I, I think finishing the seven steps. I, I think I think that's that's a big piece of the puzzle for you to do. So I, I don't want to put anything on top of that. Okay. Um, is there anything is there anything you need help with or anything that you want some? Uh, no, what? you know I think this afternoon, um, Lori and I really need to hone in on the process of bringing say tribe and ally members through or like okay through that i think that's yeah, yeah that's, okay. that's a big thing for us. okay yeah that's that's huge um i'm, I'm just yeah. i mean sometimes it, it's uh You're, you know, I don't want to give like massive amounts of new info and constantly be hitting you with the like it's more like sort of a gradated take it in, take it in. And I don't know how much like I realize when I'm speaking, you know, I, I'm so in it. I don't know how much to say about certain things. Right. That, you know, for me, I think either might be obvious or I've said before, but maybe I haven't. And for you, it's it's new information. And, and I'm yeah. I, so. Okay, so. Um, can you take us through the, say that seven step process of what a what we would do for a tribe member? And then can we break down that process? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think a big thing before that, and I think that's what we have been working on in terms of the survey and bits and pieces of going, okay, well, how do we distinguish who is tribe versus member versus customer? That's that's the big piece, right? Yeah. And I think. Okay, sorry. Well, just that that if we're looking at the new paradigm, or we're looking at like you're looking at this whole, you know, everyone around you, right, is is potentially a, a relationship. Yeah. And knowing you know really being able to figure out you know where that person is in their life and what they want to do and how 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 to get into exactly what you're talking about is is massive it's, it's just like it's the key to the whole thing yeah yeah so it's, it's exciting to get to this point so it's uh okay <laughs> okay so I'll, I'll let you think that through and um we'll see you this afternoon okay Oh, I took out these cards. We didn't do anything. Oh, else. well, let's, let's, okay, bring the cards. Let's, let's, I, I want to still do that exercise a little bit. So let's say do that, like ask, ask a question. Okay. Um, okay, well, um, not who, but what will a process look like? 
to bring somebody through um, the inflammation. Okay. Okay. So let's just say, so we're looking at the start step once so you always have that seven step model, right? Kind of in your head. So now just pull it, do a spell. Take a value card, a convo card, and a choice lens, and and uh... have you been using the choose a remedy? Uh... No. Um. I think. I, I mean, I've used it. I think I only have like two spells left. Well, no, like I'll, I think I upgraded you, but uh, I'll upgrade you to unlimited spells. I'll, I'll, I'll look. And yeah, you know what? I, I will. I'll just start doing it and Postina. Because there's, there's so many different ways to use that. And it's it's kind of like the, the bridge or the connecting point for bringing other people on board to get their attention. Right. So I, I would suggest to, to I'll, I'll come up with a list of sort of ways it can be used. Um, That'll probably help, right? Okay. Well, my thought, like, if we have, like, after the dare to be you, we're going to have, you know, that group of ladies. And, well, no. I want to be able to, say, use that tool, that oracle remedy, just to entice people. Yeah. So I can go say on a Facebook group and um, get somebody to ask a question and then I can use my access to that. Do you know how to, do you know how to save as an image and to save the spells? Do you know how to do that? Yeah. And you know it prints out as a PDF too? You can print it out as a PDF or, or each of those? Yeah. And I would suggest that as you do each one, like I actually have a remedy folder with, with images and oh. then I have people's names and I or subjects. And it's kind of like, cause you're just going to create a lot of them, but you want to create the context of, okay, this is dealing with Dan. So a, a good question is like, how do I best approach Dan? Mm -hmm. so spell comes up and then you can actually send that to Dan saying, this is what I, this is, this is what I came up with. And that's the beginning of the conversation. Okay. So you're already using the tool. You're already bringing them in. So it's it's kind of like, you know, from the business point of view, you want to bring the tools in as much as possible to show people this is how you do it kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. So my choice card was price. Okay. Okay. My conversation card was assessment. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. And the value card was clarity. Oh, that's a real good one. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, that's. <laughs> Those are perfect. <laughs> so the price is um, the sum or amount of money or it's the equivalent for which anything is bought, sold, or offered for sale. So, like an entry fee, right? Yeah. Or membership fee, things yeah. like that. Um, assessment, which we just talked about, you know, um, deciding if they're a customer, ally, or tribe member, and clarity, just to be clear, to value a clearness of thought and communication. And the yeah. thing is, I think this is, maybe we'll, I was thinking of doing something else, but if you're looking at, you know, we're going to have a pricing scheme. For mm -hmm. all of what we're offering, right? Yeah. And the customer, obviously, that's going to be like the most expensive. Yeah. That's that's like they're not getting, they're not connecting, they're not trying. You know, all they're doing is this is what service we are offering, right? Yeah. And, and then if you look at the member, they're actually going through a longer term process where they're probably spending more money, but the prices, let's say, are lower in terms of overall. Like what the members you're training them to make money with the system. Okay. That's right? So they're coming in and they're learning the tools. And then at some point they're going to be like you, they'll be facilitating and teaching in the shared knowledge community and some of that, right? They, they want 
the whole package. They want to, you know, they buy into the idea and they go, we want to be part yeah. of the team kind of thing, right? Yeah. Now we the have girl that wants to do that already. So. Awesome. So the allies is kind of like everything in between. Oh, okay. right like it's it's the most diverse it's the most sort of like an ally it could be an organization that is sending you customers and they get a percentage right so they're acting as a bit of a distributor um that's probably one of the best allies you'll have or they could be an infotech company that has a certain software that you're exchanging uh, training at the hub for their software so you're learning you're creating relationships of exchange okay. and different resources they may have, uh, but they may, they may be an organization that they sent 20 people through, you know, one of your programs and, you know, they're, they're, they go, we really believe in what you're doing and what we can do is we, you know, we'll be setting up the programs depending upon, are you an ally customer or, uh, so the pricing scheme is going to be different for everybody. And yeah. that's how, and, and that's how we're going to distinguish it. And <laughs> Claire, you said like, you know, how does that work? I don't know. How does it work? I just picked them divinely. <laughs> um, so that makes sense, right? So, and that's more on my end to really come up with that estimate form of all the possible things. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, the ideas that I'm teaching you, I present them to you, and then you can then present them to your customers kind of thing. And I, I feel that there's a high amount of leverage because let's say I take a map and let's say we, we have one session of the map with you, you then could take that map with anyone for everyone the rest of your life. So, so to me, when you're passing on the knowledge to other people, there's a high degree of value in terms of the exchange. Like what I want to do is be a fountain of products and services for you because then you know there's going to be a whole bunch of people like you, let's say high level distributors that are getting the profits, right? And then you, what you're doing is you're at the next tier doing the same thing, but then bringing in your particular content and your particular gifts that are unique to you, but still within the structure that we're, we're building together. Yeah. Yeah. Does that help clarify things? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to take a picture and we're going to use these this afternoon. Okay. Um, and what I wanted to do was, and I don't know if you do this, is you could just sit there, like, because the whole idea is, okay, question, question, you ask a question, or you, or you could just say, okay, well, let's say turn over the value card, turn over another value card. Like right now? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, excellent. Okay, now, so you're sitting there, you, you've asked a question, you got the reading, clarity, assessment, and price. And then sort of like go through the process of going, okay, assessment of price clarity, I, I get that. And then when you switch in excellence, how does that change the spell? Like, how does that, okay, now you're going, okay, well, it's not just clarity now, it's excellent. Okay, so you can go on clarity and excellence. Okay, first, you've got to be very clear about what the price is, but then excellence can be, you know, how does the estimate form look? Um, what are our standards? You know, how are we bringing our customer to a level of, of excellence? How we bring our allies to a, a, a quality of excellence? So in so many ways, right, you're going deep into the organization, you're going deep into the person and you're bringing out their best, right? And you're bringing out their best within this structure. So now let's say change the price, change the choice lines. Yeah, I'm just picking the top card of the, of yeah. the um, hierarchy. 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 Yeah. Okay. So tell me what what that would mean to you. Okay. In the system, are persons or things ranked one above another? Um, that that's a tough one because our whole concept is um, people are kind of on the same plane. We don't have, you know, president and that type of hierarchy. 
Um, so I'm not sure how that really fits, except for say maybe we are the um, teachers and the leaders in this process. Well, again, if you go, you always got to go back to the question because the question is the reference point for what these, what gives meaning to these words. So the question was how, you know, how do we onboard people through the customer ally member? So now let's, now let's say you're looking at uh, your car, car example, right? Of your, uh, of where you used to work in the car dealership. Yeah. So if you're looking at somebody's coming in and you, you've got hierarchy as the lens, like the president might be coming in or the sales manager might be coming in or a salesperson might be coming in. Right. So that's their hierarchy within their organization. Okay. So, and you may go, okay, well, clarity, uh, clarity on assessment on the, on the hierarchy, not the price. Now you're looking at, okay, well, we should only be talking to the human resource people. Or we should only be talking to presidents. Like, only the president of the company is going to be able to get the buy-in of everyone to go through our program. So we should be talking to presidents. Okay. So now you're looking at, okay, how do you onboard allies? And now you're looking at, okay, we're, we're bringing in organizations. And then we're looking at, okay, the hierarchy of the organization, like who's the decision maker in terms of who's going to approve the budget to approve this, this uh, program. So th this is what I would like you to do is to spend time and, and I would suggest each day a little bit with the cards, ask, you know, write, start to write down all the questions that you want answers to and then do the initial spell <clears throat> and then do some change, you know, change the convo type, change the value, change, change the choice line. And then what you're doing is, again, you're building the muscle in the mind of Okay, well, how do these work together? And how does, how do I see, because perception comes from conception, yeah. right? So whatever concept I'm using is, is going to give me the information that I'm going to receive. And that's a, a massive part of this whole thing. So, so just to train yourself, you know, write down your list of questions. It'd be good to on index cards, start to write down all the most important questions because everything starts with a good question. Mm -hmm. Yes, like, what are your client's questions? Like, what do they want to know? What don't they know? And here's a process that we use to take you to find out if you don't know, right? Yeah. Um, so there, that's your kind of like takeaway homework of, of, of a, a methodology to train yourself. Perfect. Okie doke. Okay, awesome. We'll see you this afternoon. Okay. Bye, Sylvia. <laughs>